footsteps behind you as you enter the woods. Night draws back its cape. Light illumines your path. Open your eyes. Listen. Welcome to Dark Softly Tales. Dark stories for dark hearts. I'm Mav Sky. Good evening and welcome to your nightmares. Where we like to keep it dark and dreamy here at Dark Softly Tales. I'm your host, Mav, and today we have a bonus episode for you. Since it happens to be that lovely pagan holiday where that mischievous flying baby in diapers, as my kids used to like to call it, flies around and shoots arrows. One of my favorite quotes on romance is by Oscar Wilde in his play, The Importance of Being Earnest. The quote goes, the very essence of romance is uncertainty, which brings me to our story today. Spindled Souls was written from an age old idea that scarecrows have souls and one day they will rise up and conquer their captors who crucify them on poles. This particular story is blended with the dark fairy tale of Rumpelstiltskin. The story won the Worst of Love contest held by Flashes in the Dark magazine back in 2010. You can find Spindled Souls along with other stories about scarecrows in my book Scarecrows, Three Tales to Chill Your Bones on Amazon. Or catch the link in the show notes. With that being said, let's jump into this dark tale. Don't worry, I've got your hand and will not let the princess prick you with her spindler's needle. Take my hand and hang on tight as we journey into the dark softly. Spindled Souls by Mav Sky Sunlight melted frost from their feet. Wallace watched her blonde strands blow in the autumnal breeze. Cotton clad her figure, but from this distance it appeared as silk, the way it shone and outlined her curves. Anne stared back with eyes of coal and the hint of smile he'd fallen in love with. Ravens collected on her arms, worshipping her savage beauty. It had been this way since time began. A sea of cornstalks separated them. A speckled dove, Anne's favorite, landed on his outstretched arms, hopped upon his shoulder, and nibbled at his hat. He laughed and hoped the bowing cornstalks would carry it to his blonde beauty across the fields. The dove finished pecking his hat, nestled against his face, and cooed into his ear. Wallace smiled at the message and whispered his own. It stretched its wings and flew away, and as he watched it fly over the fields towards Anne, he felt a pang of sadness. They would never be together, not the way he or she wished. They were destined to their poles overlooking the earth, caged guardians. The dove lighted upon Anne's shoulder, He saw her eyes sparkle in the morning light. A bark of voices drew his attention. Two men led horse and carriage. They laughed and joked, not minding the stalks they strode over. A murder of crows flew from Wallace's feet as the carriage approached, halted. One of the men hauled a ladder. Yep, it's a mighty pity for the young princess. I don't know what kind of magic they're up against, but we've done run out of straw. The princess insisted on more. He placed the ladder against Wallace's pole. Oh yeah? Well, I heard that there's also trying to figure out names and coming up with some weird ones they are. Wallace heard Twine snip. The upper half of his body fell forward. I hear, said the man holding the horse that some evil gnome is trying to kidnap the baby. Another snip of twine, and Wallace fell like a rag doll. Wallace, Anne's voice called for him, 
Ravens and grackles cawed. So this is it, he thought. It's the end. The man tossed him into the carriage. Wallace's fate hit the wooden side. Moans and sweeping sifted up from the pile beneath him. Others, he thought. How many others? Wallace! Anne's voice cried out again, and the doves mourned. He couldn't hear the men above the rumble of the carriage and the mass of weeping beneath him. Wallace thought of Anne. Her blonde straw contrasted against her white form, her dark eyes and teasing smile. He would never see her again. Never. The cart stopped. He was lifted and tossed along with the others into a wheelbarrow, then wheeled into the castle. Wallace watched in amazement as he was rolled through a labyrinth of stone walls and candlelight, finally entering a tiny room. A spindle stood in the middle. A candle licked the darkness beside it. Lifted and tossed, Wallace landed with his back propped against the wall. He saw two piles on the floor. The lesser, a heap of straw bodies. The larger, spun gold. It pooled into golden chains cascading across the dirty floor. Murder! Murder! cried the voices of the straw folk. The room reeked of screams and silent accusations. Wallace closed his eyes to their screams, to the horror of the sharp spindle's needle. The door slammed shut, bolted. He thought of Anne, her soft kisses blown across the fields. A clink of bolts echoed, and the doors opened. Another wheelbarrow came in. It's the last of them said a gruff voice. Something soft was tossed on his lap. It wept. Its cry pricked his ears, and the door shut. Wallace. Her voice whispered above the cries. He opened his eyes, and there in his lap laid Anne. The glow of candlelight illuminated those coal eyes. Anne, he whispered. Willing all his power in the muscles he'd never used, he raised his arm and placed his straw hand upon her brow, touching the blonde strands he dreamed about. Their eyes met. It was enough that they touched, felt, needed. Again, the door opened. Soft footsteps crept in. A sniff and a gentle, Thank you, caused Wallace and Anne to pause, and turned to the female who entered the room. She wore a golden crown. Red hair spilled down her violet dress. The princess held a fragile creature in a bundle of cream blankets. They could hear the baby's easy breathing. I love you, my son, she whispered, then handed him to the guard. Take him. Hide him where we spoke of. Yes, my lady. They heard the princess's breath catch as the guard's footsteps whisked away, and she closed the door once more. She lifted the candle from the chair and set it upon the floor, then pulled straw body from a nearby pile. Her foot tapped the pedal. The wheel spun. She grasped the handful of straw and began to work. The straw man's scream filled the room. The princess focused on her task, oblivious. Wallace and Anne watched, mesmerized as a sparkle of golden chains spooled from the spindle. The princess pulled straw from the bodies one by one until the candle burned low and shadows grew long on the wall. Anne and Wallace looked into each other's eyes, each speaking the thoughts and murmurs of lovers as their time approached. We will die, said Anne. Wallace shook his head and smiled. No, we shall be spun together, my love. Two threads of gold woven into one. We shall live forever. Anne smiled at this, and when the princess's bleeding fingers reached for them, he saw in Anne's eyes that she was unafraid. The princess mixed their life straw together upon her lap, and the wheel began to spin. Their souls and straw merged to stardust of magic and gold.
Thank you for listening to today's bonus story. If you enjoyed the story, please rate, review, or subscribe. Your support means the world to me, and it keeps the show going. I have another request. I am looking for true stories for our True Tales to Tell in the Dark episodes starting this March. If you have a true scary story to tell, please email it to me at darksoftlytales at gmail.com. Or you can check the show notes for details. As always, thank you so much for your support. And we'll see you on Monday with part two of God's Guns and Serpent Tongues. <laughs>